Okay, so we're going to set up a new tool. Our 3 8 compression cutter uh, is a little bit dull. So the first thing we got to do is remove the tool. This is a typical compression pallet. Uh, we have two different, two different tool holders. So there's two different clamps for the jigs. Kind of wobble it back and forth until you get it to engage, fully engage. And we use a wrench. Break this. Ram on it. And it can rotate a little bit more, and then there'll be another point where it jams. Once it breaks loose, you should be able to take it out by hand. And once it's out, we can clear off the collet. Use the rag to pull that tool out, we don't want to cut our fingers. This tool will go to get sharpened. Still got a fair amount of life left to it. And the collet comes out of the tool holder. You can grab the back of the collet, pinch it to the to the nut, and twist. I give it a brief push, and then that pops it out of the nut. I'm going to want to clean all the dust and debris out of these and we'll get these clean and then we'll continue. Now one of the things that we want to do when we get our collet back is when we clean it up we want to check that we don't have a lot of polishing on the inside edge where the tool goes because that would indicate that the tool is flipping a little bit. Um, we want to make sure that there's no wear right on that inside edge. have some brushes and some cleaning solution that we use for cleaning our tools off to get rid of some of the rust. That's just cleaner. Cleaner and wax to give it a protective coating so that it doesn't oxidize as much but it shouldn't impact the ability of the tool to hold, or for the tool holder to hold the work, or the tool. Cleaning out the outside conical surface because that's what matches with the cylinder and the spindle. Um, and, and that, if we have rust or buildup on here, it's going to cause the tool to stick in the spindle. So we don't want that. Next. Yeah, we want to get, get that gunk out of the threads. pads here which you can use to clean off that cone a little bit. Okay. So once that's wiped down and we get our fingerprints off of it as best we can. We don't want to leave fingerprints on this because that will cause oxidation as well. Not cleaned out, we gotta get the debris out of there. Light spray on this. We really don't want a whole lot on this because we 
we want we don't want this to yeah, fly. Right. But we also don't want it to seize. So back in, we could kind of get it at an angle and push from behind. And it should just pop right into place. Okay. And then that sets down into the tool. Now I've got the threads a little bit and then we can put our tool in. Again, we're going to make sure we don't have any oil or grease on the tool. Get it nice and dry. Make sure that we are have enough of our shank buried in. If you look at this, we have a fair amount of, of space on our shank. And there's actually, um, if you look at our, if you look at our pallet, There's a recess back here, so we actually don't have a whole lot of gripping area. So if we look at what that looks like, with that That's as much of the tool as we can actually grab. And I'm having a little bit of extra length hanging out. Probably good thing. We do not want to clamp onto the flutes. Once the flutes have started, that, that's not a good spot for it to be clamped. So we want to make sure the flutes are entirely outside of the poly. have our, our uh, torque wrench set to 90 foot pounds and what we want to do is we want to on your tool and with one hand we want to tighten the nut until we get a click like that once it clicks we're done don't need to go any further than that now that we've, taken, we've tightened our tool, we can put it in our measuring bed. And we set the zero on our tool when it's touching the, our tabletop here. We set, set it clear to zero. And then we should be able to elevate the tool. And preferably we have a piece of paper Sticky note. Mm -hmm. We use a piece of paper between the tool and our measure. Here's the pen. There we get this. What we want, we don't want to touch the carbide of our calipers to the tip of our router bit. So you want to align it up over the top of it and then descend the, 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 the calipers until it grabs the paper. And you can just barely drag it out. And then when we look at our reading, and it's 122.59. So we're going to write that down. One twenty two point five nine. And we're going to use that measurement, which is from the bottom of the tool, from the bottom of the tool holder, to the tip of our router. Bit. Now we're going to go put this in the CNC and configure the tool database. 